I started June 1957, because that was the year it started, on the January. I was fortunate enough to be told there was a vacancy for, uh, at that time, Ball for Beatties. Barclay was known as the first to go online, if you like, and um, we were very privileged, I suppose. And of course, Barclay, it, yeah, I said before, it put them on the map. Yeah, I think in the early days it was still very much cutting edge technology and I was involved with the pioneering work on the reactor in core inspections and uh, although we had fairly crude equipment, uh, the robot etc, it, uh, it stretched us and, and we did succeed in uh, examining all the things that were coming to light from uh, other stations and uh, colder hall reactors in particular. In, in the early days, everything was to get maximum generation and uh, it was a great achievement when we could sort of get 100% over a month. In, uh, back in the 60s, a very, very busy site, lots of people working, lots of work going on. And really, our main objective then was keeping Barclay running and keeping electricity generating. So that was our main priority. But it was all very interesting for me, like I said, to have to work down in compressed air, down in the tunnel, and then in the reactors and places like that. It was all a big experience. I worked with some great engineers and um, everyone enjoyed working. One of the things that's always stuck in my mind is the determination for people to get to work. Uh, back in the 60s, when the flood defences weren't that brilliant down here, that we had a flood between the bridge and the, and the caravan site on the corner, which was under four foot of water. I said, so people, couldn't actually get to work. So they managed to get to Barclay, and then the only way that we could get to work was by, by borrowing a tractor and trailer from the local farmer, who then proceeded to come up, pick people up on the back of the trailer, and probably 20 or 30 people at a the time then came through the flood, and we reversed the situation on the way home. Now this happened for two or three days. I came to Barclay in early September 1974 as an apprentice to the southwestern region. A lot of people have passed through the site. 99% of them have been wonderful people. The site is uh, totally separate to all of that. It's been a good place to work. The company's been good, but it's the people that make it. Many years when we were actually generating, there was lots of families that actually worked here who had wives and husbands and even children working on the site. So it was really hub of the actual community as well. 
especially with the actual sports and social club, which is next door, which um, there was lots of different things going on there. So there was a very big buzz when we, actually we were generating. In the middle life of the station, when we refurbished and upgraded the fuel handling equipment and the cooling ponds, I was much involved with that, mainly putting the, the operations point of view forward and always campaigning for to, to get it just as just as we wanted it. We knew that we were going to cease generation in uh, March 89 because we'd been told the previous year that we would be closing in, in March next year. We already had one reactor off which we were overhauling and we've done rather a lot of work on that reactor so most people thought well we're going to run a little bit longer but you never know what's around the corner. Um, but people just realised that you know one day the, the site was going to close and it had gone past its 25 year estimated life. So we were past the 25 years, so every year really was a bonus. But it's still a shock when people tell you you're season generation. The site has changed quite dramatically really from when we, we started because there's now no turbine hall, uh, cooling ponds have been completely decommissioned and uh, covered over now so there, nobody needs to, to worry about those for the future and um, as you can see with the reactors this used to be a very very busy charge phase with a lot of equipment and machinery, some of it 85 tonnes and of course the height of the reactors has been lowered, that's come down now by about 50 feet and as you see each floor is very much like this one with nothing on it at all. It is the correct con conclusion of the reactors. I was involved in very much with the defueling and then, in, and then inhibiting all the control rods so they couldn't possibly be pulled out again and then uh, the dismantling of all the charge face machinery uh, and then following on from that the, uh, the, the cooling ponds it said that this was the first site to actually completely clean up and demolish a, a set of cooling ponds so that was quite a feather in her cap really Put it into safe store has been quite, to us, quite an achievement. 
Um, there's been a lot of uh, work going on on the reactors from the very early days and uh, on the general site. But the reactors in the end has been taking about two, two and a half years now to be put into final safe store. And the type of works we've done has ranged from heavy lifting and placing large loads into a safe passive state um, a large electrical um, overlay uh, piece of works which included um, removing the 11 kV circuits from the reactor buildings. Um, and we've also undertaken a large amount of work to prevent water ingress into the buildings to preserve their integrity over the next uh, safe door period. Yeah, this, this has been quite a surprising project. We, the project team itself is relatively small, but uh, uh, importantly it's getting the right people. Um, particularly uh, people with past experience and the right uh, contract management skills. There's been many challenges. The biggest one we've come across really is managing asbestos. Now that's a legacy from the past. Uh, regulations have changed uh, and the asbestos has been a huge problem, um, th which meant that it slowed us down in terms of controlling and remediating the asbestos. We've had to um, spend an awful lot of time in um, considering all of the pos potential problems that could occur in the building over the, over the safe store period. We had a huge amount of help in that. But in the project team, we had two gentlemen that were here when the power station was operational. And so they have a massive understanding of how the, how the plant works. Without those two guys, the project would have been twice as difficult. We've had no safety incidents in the two years of the site works. Um, which is a fantastic reflection on both the site, the project team and the contractors that have worked on it. For, for the, the NDA, our customer, this is also a very significant achievement. It's the first Magnox reactor to, to get into the care and maintenance state. That's, they're in the safe store condition. Uh, it's never been done before in the UK uh, and the NDA are very, very keen on seeing this project completed successfully. Uh, as I say, a significant achievement and we expect the other sites to follow suit shortly. Well, when we finally close the doors, I think it will really be a sense of achievement from my part. I feel that over the last 20 years, that is one thing that I've been aiming for, personally, is something to, to get the reactors into a state where we can walk away and leave them. And that's, that, to me, is our greatest achievement. When the reactor doors finally shut, um, it is the end of another chapter, just the same as when the turbine hall came down. But the world goes on and we will find the next project to move to. I want to say thank you very much for a job very well done. Lots of obstacles, lots of problems have had to be worked through. I think it has been a brilliant job and uh, they all should be congratulated for doing a job very well and very safely for the whole community. Uh, with the completion of the Safe Store project, the mission is now all around dealing with the ILW legacy at Berkeley. Uh, we only have three areas where ILW is stored on site, the, the vaults, uh, the shielded area facility and the season removal plant. Once those three areas are finished, then we're ready to put the whole site into care and maintenance. The, the challenge associated with that work is massive uh, and we're not underestimating it at all, but we've got a very keen and enthusiastic team in place to look forward for the next part of the mission. If you were to come back in 10 years' time, I'd like to think all the ILW work would be finished and the site, the whole site was in the care and maintenance phase. Um, for, for Barclay, that means um, fewer people being on site uh, because the mission will have been delivered. But uh, there's plenty of other work to do within the Magnox fleet just down the road in Albury. Uh, they'll be moving into their decommissioning program in that period. So hopefully Barclay will be a much quieter place in 10 years' time.